If drawn into a war against Russia, US and NATO forces would first begin combating Russian cyber attacks, misinformation and third-party surrogate forces, said retired General Herbert Hawk Carlyle, former head of Air Combat Command. Carlyle said fighting likely will follow a period of steadily rising tensions and warnings. That would give the US enough notice to start moving more airplanes, preparing logistics, and increasing combat capability in Europe, he said. Nevertheless, the Russians could seize the initiative and move quickly, putting the US at a big disadvantage. Neutralizing Russia's air defenses would be one of the most crucial and dangerous missions for the Air Force. In the early hours of hostilities, as Russian tanks, fighters and bombers roll into the Baltics, Air Force jets from England, Italy and Germany would arrive to tease out Russia's advanced surface-to-air defenses and then try to destroy them. The Air Force's fighter squadrons in the region would see the most ferocious air-to-air -air dogfighting in decades. Simultaneously, the 173rd Airborne Brigade Combat Team in Italy and the 2nd Cavalry Regiment in Germany would join NATO forces to head to the fight. They, alongside NATO forces, would face as many as 22 maneuver warfare battalions that Russia has in its western military district along NATO's border. Reports cite a window of to 60 hours for Russian forces to reach and begin siege operations on Tallinn and Riga, the capitals of Estonia and Latvia. Quality light forces, like the US airborne infantry that the NATO players typically deploy into Riga and Tallinn, can put up stout resistance when dug into urban terrain. But the cost of mounting such a defense to the city and its residents is typically very high, said a 2016 RAND study on deterring Russia. The Army's 173rd recognized its own weaknesses if thrust into combat with Russia, according to internal review documents, as reported by Politico. The report states GPS communications would be disabled easily and quickly, forcing troops to rely on rusty high-frequency radio communication skills. The brigade also has limited air defense or electronic warfare units. NATO forces, especially armor brigades in Poland, would have to cross the Kaliningrad Corridor, wedged between where Poland's border meets Lithuania and hedged on each side by Russian territory and Belarus. Meanwhile, the Russians could carry out previous promises to attack Polish missile defense systems. Incremental invasions of small areas of Baltic territory may or may not provoke a NATO response. But, experts agree, an attack on Poland would. The current two U.S. Army Armored Brigade combat teams in Europe would race to the fight but be outgunned and likely destroyed quickly. Said retired Army Colonel Doug McGregor, referring to the new strikers that are outfitted with a 30mm cannon. That would be fine on the Mexican border. That formation will be gone in 10 minutes against the Russians. A Russian strike through Belarus into the Baltics would be so quick and overwhelming that, like with Crimea, NATO would have to accept that those states are now in the Russian orbit, said retired Army Maj. General Robert Scales. <laughs>